God the Father, just ask you to bless this time, Lord, and anybody that may be coming. But Lord, we're here, and where two or three are gathered together, Lord God, may we exalt the Lord Jesus Christ in the Word of God. For Jesus' sake we pray. Amen. All right. John chapter 1, mm -hmm. verse 12. We will start 1, read down again. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, the Word. Without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not, Jewish people. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. And verse two, 12 is just loaded because that brings us to 2018. Right. Because as many, and we, we, we're going to rehash what, just a little update what we've done in verse 12, many, not all people will be saved, received. Now I said some people, they don't like to say receive Christ. Well, there, there it is. I received him. To him, to them, excuse me, that received Christ, gave he power to become the sons of God. We are the sons of God. To them, the believers, gave he, Jesus, power. And we're not talking about power of video games or anything like that. We're talking about the power of God. Sons of God. It's a wonderful thing that I can say that God is my Father. A lot of people... You know, Father is throw, so thrown in the Catholic religion. Father this, Father that, I Father know. both. And you don't really get the, the revelation to your life to realize, well, John 8, 44. Father is not just to be thrown there. And there will be people who will pray in church and be Father, Father, Father. And, and it's a name that's just thrown out. Right. And it ought not to be. You ought to just kick back and realize everything that there is, that's my Father. If I'm saved. All my salvation it rests upon my father. And when we look at John 8, 44, there are two fathers. Ye of your father, the devil. Now John chapter 1 was talking about God the Father. He is the father of the devil. The lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, both not in the truth. Because there is no truth in him. And when he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar. Some kind of father. And the father of it. Now when we look at mankind, we're looking at there are two fathers. You're either of Satan, you're not saved, you're not born again, you've never received Christ, or you become a child of God through receiving Jesus Christ, and you're no longer under Satan. Amen. And God has what the Bible says, maybe we'll get into it, but let me say it now so we know, so we don't forget. We are adopted by God. Why are we adopted? Why, and it did say born, but the adoption is because Satan is our father, thanks to Adam and Eve. Now we're born into God because God made us, but we stepped aside from God. And when we stepped aside from God and rebelled against God, we acquired Satan as our father. Right. And to get out from the, from the fatherhood of Satan, we must receive Christ as our Savior. In that moment, he adopts us back into the family. Angels are called the sons of God. And the Bible lures to the fact is we will be as angels. We won't, we won't, be, we won't have any sex. I mean, male or female, and we won't have any sex. Because they say, well, in the resurrection, whose wife shall he be? She, she had seven husbands. Well, none, he said. We'll be eternal as the angels are. Angels never die. That's right. And those that went with Satan, they're going to go off into hell burning forever. 
we're going to judge angels. So, let's look at the Father, Matthew 5, 16. As the wind picks up. Matthew 5, 16. It's a wonderful thing for God to be our Father, capital F. Because he's all truth. He's never lied. He can't lie. He's unable to lie. Satan is the liar. And though you may be born again, though you may be a child of God, but you can take on your father attitudes. There are many Christians, there are people out there who will lie. That's not God. That's Satan. We just read that, John 8, 44. So, Matthew 5, 16 let your light, oh, there's that light, so shine before men. And you'll hear everybody will say that. Oh, I let my light shine. Really? And you can't recognize what the Bible says? You have no umption that Satan knows some Bible verses. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. And glorify your Father, which is in heaven. Now notice the capital F. Our Father is in heaven. Satan, he visits heaven, but he leaves. Mm -hmm. Job 1 and 2. Our light. Well, I let my light shine. Well, John chapter 1 said that light is Jesus Christ, and you received him. Now, there are some people will go about and say, well, God's my Father, I let my light shine. Yeah, I received Jesus Christ. I drink him and I eat him. Mm -hmm. That's not salvation. Yeah. Now, that's where you get into trouble. You know, have you received Christ? Well, if you're talking about a Catholic, yeah, I receive Christ every Mass. Yeah, because that's what they learn in their Catholic And you have to, and you have to explore and find out what they receive. But here, this light, when people say, let, I let my light shine, that's not your light. At that moment, you say, well, I let my light shine. No, 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 you're out of bracket. The light is to shine is Jesus. Amen. And when you come up and say, well, I let my light shine, and what you do is turn people away, you have no knowledge of the Bible. Because that's exactly what Jesus did. His, yeah, Jesus did good, Jesus did right, but he also spoke the truth. He also came from the Father. He's also God. Outside no one else, outside no Mary, no Jesus is not God, uh, you know, coming to no, wherever the religions are, that light is the light of Jesus Christ and that's what's all about me. Jesus. There are people out there all about me. It's my light. I let my light shine. See my work. We're not saved by works. That's right. Not of works, least any man boasts. So shut up about your light. Shut up about you. Let yourself, everybody see who you are. Shut up and put on Jesus Christ and let that light shine. Amen. That's the thing. I mean, there are just people out there, uh, chapter 45, same chapter. When they open up their mouth, they show their Bible stupidity. I use the word stupid today. I try to use that word every day. Chapter 6, verse 45. Okay, Matthew. Matthew. It's the same chapter. So like, oh, okay. Now, when we're in Matthew, you got to be careful because Matthew is written to Jews. 645. Uh, 545, excuse me. 545. I'm yeah, looking at chapter 6. I'm looking at chapter 6 here. 545. Oh. I hate when they put these titles and God messes you up. That ye may be the children of your father. I am a child of the father. Amen. When I read Matthew and I read you may be, uh, I am by Jesus Christ. You may be the children of your father which is in heaven. Well, we just read that verse 16, the father which is in heaven. You realize our father, and I, listen, I was born of Frank Hayward, New London, Connecticut, and all that, but you realize my father it's not only in heaven. He runs heaven. And we read in John chapter 1, as we as we view what, what we read so far, He made it all. My Father made me, knows everything in my body. Now, a doctor may be able to prescribe medicine or, or do surgery, stuff like that, but God knows how it's really made and how it really runs. So, God, it's your, uh, your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh the sun to rise on the evil and on the good. 
No one has that power, including weather forecasters, to say, it's, it, we're, we're going to make it rain tomorrow. No. There's a chance of rain, 35, 60, 80 percent. But they can't say, they can't make it. And the fact is that that sun comes up in the east every morning is the power of God. There's coming a time in the tribulation period that that sun is not going to come, that moon is not going to show, and the stars are going to be darkened. There was a time in Egypt when God said, no sun over there, but let there be light over here. Our God has the power of that sun. You want to try that for the Pope? You want to try that for Mary? You want to try that for... And if God is Jesus and Jesus is God, he has that same power over the sun. And where do men go wrong? They worship the sun more than they worship the creator. They lay out half naked in some places, absolutely naked in front of their God. Sunrise service. Sunrise service, which is against the Bible. So, what we read so far is that God is our light. He's in heaven. He's our father. He controls the sun. On the good and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. He's in control of the weather. Now, last Saturday, I kind of said in tongue in cheek, but we prayed that the rain would hold off so we could preach. And the rain held off until we could preach. And I told him, I said, You better thank God that while it's clear, while a man is yelling at you the gospel, people are coming without it raining, buying your merchandise. You're not thinking about that. And we ought to turn to God for the weather. Now, I will say, say, Lord God, you know, I like to have no rain. I don't order them. But, Lord, there may be someone who's praying for rain. Just because I want it doesn't mean it's beneficial for somebody else. But the, the order and control, Lord God, we have something coming. If you would please, you don't turn to the weather forecast. They don't know nothing. They have a hard time telling you what yesterday's weather was. We have the Father that's in control of the sun, in control of the moon, and in control of the weather. Notice how today it's a nice day for us to sit here and have a Bible study, and it's been freezing cold. Amen. Freezing cold while we've had doctor appointments and that, and we were unable to meet here. Now we're able to meet here, and we got this little breeze that shows up every once in a while. I don't mind meeting and having Bible study here. I don't care there's no walls and stuff like that. We're matching with the Word of God, glory of God. We take the video and we send it out and people in, in Indonesia and uh, India. India are listening. Oh, wow. So, chapter 5, verse 48. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. How's that? There are people who say, well, I'm perfect. No, you're not. We can find some flaw in you somewhere. Amen. Give you an MRI, x-ray, something like that. We'll find some flaw. Talk to your wife. Talk to your ch children. Talk to your parents. We'll find but God, he's perfect. Absolutely. There is nothing in God's frame ever to do wrong, ever to do evil. And as... The child of God, him, my father, he wants the absolute best for me, and he can do it. I'm the failure. Right now, I'm going through right now, I'm just not lack. I am lacking faith. But God keeps on long and saying, hey, listen, I'm taking care of you, I'm taking care of you. But what about that day when he calls us home, whether death? Or absolutely, definitely rapture, whenever that happens. It's going to happen. What about that moment when he takes us into glory, removes that sin, gives us that new body? No more sin. No more lying. No more tears. Imagine what our Father is going to do for us as we praise his Son, Jesus. No one else. There are people who are saying, God is wonderfully happy because I showed up in church. God would be so great because I am in heaven. Absolutely not. Well, you know, the angels rejoice. The angels yeah. rejoice. But Amen. how perfect is God that one day he's going to give us a body that will never break down again? That's perfect. That's yeah. right. God is doing what Obamacare can. God is doing what the United States is trying to do with health care. Right. All right, fine. We can give you health care coverage. God says, I'll just take care of all the health care problems. 
and I'll throw some doctors and nurses and scientists in heaven by Jesus Christ. Just, hey, we don't need them. There will be pharmacists in heaven, but we don't need them. We won't have no medications, no tablets, pills, or anything like that. We don't have to worry breaking down. That's our Father's perfect. We're going to a place, New Jerusalem, we don't need plumbers. We don't need to fix anything. We, it won't break down ever again. We got a tree. I forget how many trees. Lined along the water in New Jerusalem, and they grow all year round, and you don't need a gardener. This world. They say... Uh, Life is good. No, it's not. Not without Jesus Christ. It's horrible. That's wickedness. Right. They don't care about you. You can spend all your money in Walmart. But when you're broke and you have nothing, go up to the CEOs of Walmart and say, listen, here's all the receipts I got, the stuff I paid for, and see if they'll take care of you. <laughs> see if that priest would help you out. See if that pastor in the end will help you out. Only God, our Father, Amen. perfect. I can't even describe perfect of God. I guess without sin, holy righteous. I have not ever mastered that right. I don't know what heaven's going to be like because I'm in a sin-cursed world and a sin-cursed body. Amen. That's our perfectness of our Father. Matthew 6.14 6, Take heed that you do not your alms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, you have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. There he is in heaven again. Um, I can't describe perfect. You know, people, people get upset. Jesus never preached hell. He preached more about hell than he did about heaven. He, Jesus could not. He told Nicodemus one night, he says, listen, if you can't get this, I'm, I'm paraphrasing. If you can't get this, you ain't going to get the idea of heaven. Paul says, listen, it's unspeakable. It's going to take eternity for our minds to fathom what heaven is. And we cannot explain it to the fact is when I preach to people about the gospel, I am irritated with love and care that they will not listen. I, I think I can say those three words together. I am mad that they won't receive Christ, and it's like I'm heartbroken that they won't. They don't realize. And then you can't realize... How bad is a third degree, third degree, quadruple burn degree in hell? Now they say there's two worst pains ever to be in this planet. Number one, third degree burns. Oh, they, I think it says 80% of your body. I, I would think 1% for me. If I burn my finger on the stove, I'm, I'm, that's it. I'm down for two years. I'm in pain. You can't get me in a dentist chair. I'm not happy. I, you've got to Novocaine me. you got to... And then they say pregnancy. Well, the Bible says hell is worse. You know, what, you know what God relates pregnancy of a woman? I guarantee you, I've heard a woman in the birthing room one day giving birth to a baby. God likens that to the tribulation period. Whenever you see travail as a woman, that's a tribulation passage. Mm -hmm. Hell is much worse. Are we, are we having a good time in the Lord right now in the Word of God? Imagine when we get to heaven, we have in the Word of God without sin, without problem, no more wristwatches, no more time. No more, you know, is the city going to come? Right. Everybody that's faithful will show up. How's that? Amen. You don't have to worry about sinners. You don't have to worry about drugs. You don't have to worry about alcohol. You won't have right. garbage cans stinking up the area. You won't have noisy mufflers, thank God. Everything that's a disgrace and a bother on this earth, God the Father is perfect, is given us. 614. And if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. 1 John 1 9 says, If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, I, before April 1987, the 21st, I lived a vile life I would not to tell anybody. Mm. I don't have to tell anybody because it's all gone. Amen. And when life. Satan brings it up and he brings it up, he says, what about that? All I can say, it's under the blood. Amen. Now, if he brings up things after the 21st of, uh, of April, 
1987. Now I gotta think, well, wait a minute. Did he put that under the blood? Lord God, I don't know. If that's not under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, I do so now. I apologize. But there are sins I know that are since 1987. I have put under the blood. And Satan will come, what about that? It's under the blood. My father forget. Hey, Father, devil, you don't forget. Because you bring it back all the time, you miserable little wrench. And what would it be the for... The accuser of the brethren. The accuser... So... That's right. Would that be one of the things that would you be thinking about in hell? All eternity. All the things you did not to receive. Can you... Now, listen. I don't know. You can throw this in the garbage can. Okay? I say this all the time. If it's my opinion, you can throw it in the garbage can. Can you imagine those people that hear this loud mouth, that hate this voice, that preaches the gospel? Can you imagine those words haunt them in hell for all eternity? That man tried to tell me about Jesus. I still hate Jesus. I still hate that word. And they still hear my voice. They repent, believe in the Lord Jesus. Listen, they, the unsaved people, quote John 3.16 to me. Yeah, down at the farmer's market. They yell it right as soon as we show up. They what know, about they know that? The verse. Sure they but know. my father, Why don't they accept it? I have done some terrible sins that in the Old Testament, you would stone me. And you would go to hell. Not only is just adultery and killing somebody like David did with Uriah, but there, there's pride, there's disobedience. If your child did not listen, that was me, teenage years. I caused my mom great, great displeasure, great frustrations when I, when I grew up as a teenager. I would have been stoned. 19 years old, I got saved. That's all under the blood. I can pray for all those people. My Father, in heaven, forgives and forget. I've done things with my dad, and one of the, I don't like bringing people in my dad's house because he brings everything up that I've done bad. Tracy knows. Really? Yeah, when I first met him. You're going to marry him? Is it just like that? Yep. My Father, in heaven, yours. boom, forgiven. But my wife can, knows, knows my father could point out some things about him, too. But listen, I'm incapable. My son, had, my son has done something violent to my family. He's asked forgiveness and all that. And he's gotten right with God. He's serving the Lord today. But the memory is still here. God looks at that and says, I don't know what you... Can you imagine bringing God your sins? He's like, I don't know what you're talking about. Can we talk about something else? Amen. That's exactly what it is. Once you put it under the blood, our Father in heaven says... Our Father in Heaven. Forget how it will be in thy name. Lord. Our Father in Heaven says, hey, What are you talking about? I don't know what you're doing. Did you enjoy the sunshine and the rain I gave you for your vegetables? But God, I don't know what you're talking about. I never lie. How about this? Let's talk about that. Amen. So that's a wonderful John 4, 23. The Father. And like I said, I've heard people say prayer, Father, Father. I get annoyed with some of those prayers. They throw Father every other word. It's like, and I look at your life like, I, now I'm going to tell you something reverently. I don't really address God as my Father for two reasons. Because I really didn't have a Father growing up. And I'm not going to get into more of that. And I don't see a Father figure. I don't know what a Father figure is. And also to me, the holiness of God, I'm not worthy even to mention Him. But I do. God is just so wonderful. So John 4, 23. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father seeketh, seeketh such to worship. There is coming a day when we stand before God as sorry as our families and friends and relatives and all that, there's going to be coming a day when we stand before the Father and all those that are saved will be there. And those that don't won't be there. And I say as far as, you know what? I preach, I preach Jesus. I love you enough to preach Jesus. I tell, but if you don't love my God, you don't love my Jesus, you don't love my Bible, I don't want you in heaven because you're not going to be there. I hate the idea of someone saying, we're all going to get to heaven. No. Mm -mm. They're not even going to like it there. If they don't like the preaching he does here. In the teaching. Mm -hmm. We've had a few people just take off. It's like, well, 
It's that's, music. That's what heaven is. Glorifying God. So, Amen. there's coming a day. With all the frustrations we have in this world, we're coming to a day that either be absent from the body, present with the Lord, or called up hither. We will be in the presence of forever with God. And we're not going to pat each other on our backs. We're not going to say, well, look at, look, look at our big fancy building. Ha, 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 you met in the pavilion. We're not going to do that. We sat under Jesus Christ. And if you're going to be like that, you may not even be there. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. That's what you're looking for. the church is the people. That's right. It's not about a building. Nope. People think so, it's building. our perfect Father is going to allow us, and we're going to worship Him in the Son. Now, one of the things, and not, not that I worship, but one of the things I want, I want to hear them cherubims cry out, mm -hmm. holy, holy, holy. I'm going to be there. By the blood of Jesus, not by my own merits. We're going to sing for once, and Tracy's going to giggle on this one. We're going to sing for once. We're going to sing proper hymns before God. Amen. Without having to check to see if they're right or wrong. I wouldn't need There's to do... So I wouldn't need to do a study on hymns if they were not wrong. But in heaven... You'll never have to question what you do. You'll never have a guilty feeling. You will never have to see. It is just perfect before the Father. I can't even explain it enough. Wish I could. As much as some people, I wish I could get them to heaven, but I can't. I'd like to get us all to But listen, listen. I'm speaking about heaven. 45 minutes from now, maybe even much sooner, my eyes are going to be taken off heaven and I'm going to be involved in some sin or some worldliness or some. But when we get to heaven, there is no more time. It's forever about God. That's right. No more worldly matters. There are times right now, I look at my daughter, I look at the way the world is today, I'm just sorry I brought her into this world today, as far as what the troubles and problems are. But if she's saved, she received Christ as her Savior, she's going to a place where I don't have to worry about that no more. Amen. I mean, today we hear about this young girl. I mean, she's very young. She goes to church and the, and the boys are patting her on the butt and pretending to... At your church? No. This, no this, somebody we know. Somebody we know. Her, That's why her, I don't... Her first grade... First grade. The boys in her class will walk up to her and like that on her... Grab her butt. You're kidding. And, but the thing is, that's why I don't have my daughter in school. And before our Father in Heaven, things will be right. Before our Father in Heaven, all will be right. There will be no more profanity. No more sin. Amen. Chapter 5, verse 18 in John. Now, this is a kind of weird testimony. You know, you could bring the Bible in the courtroom and a righteous judge would have to say, it is so, it is true. 5.18. John 5.18. Therefore the Jews, he came on his own, his own received or not, <laughs> sought more to kill him. Oh, great Jews. Because he not only had broken the Sabbath, ooh, but he said also that God was his father, making himself equal with God. Now that's the testimony of the Jews. All right? Jehovah Witnesses will have a hard time in heaven. Now, I'm not saying all Jehovah Witnesses are lost. There are some saved Jehovah Witnesses. But the doctrines of the Jehovah Witnesses say that Jesus is not God. And he's God. So when we worship the Father, we're going to worship the Son. So, and there are religions out there that put more emphasis on God than they do Jesus. They'll put more emphasis on God and the Mother rather than the Son. But since God is Jesus and Jesus is God, and Thomas said, my Lord, my God, and I can't find anybody refute that, when we get to heaven to worship the Father, we're going to worship the Son. That's Scripture. So, 
If you're ever going to have a very simple thing to do when you're witnessing to a Jehovah Witness, my Lord, my God. That's what Thomas said. Explain, no, nothing else. You explain that to me, then we're done. Right. If you can disprove what Thomas said and Jesus did not rebuke him. Now listen, one day Jesus said, listen, I'm, 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 gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm paraphrasing again. I'm going, to be, I'm going to be crucified. They're going to spit upon me. They're going to beat me. They're going to, I mean, listen, the, the Gentiles are going to have their way with me. Peter said, oh, no, Lord, Lord, not so. Get behind me, Satan. Now, Jesus rebuked Peter for love of Peter to had upon Christ. Peter would not want to see Jesus be killed and tortured and all that. Peter loved Jesus, and he was rebuked. Thomas steps up to Jesus and says, my Lord, my God, and there's no rebuke. Matter of fact, there's a blessing to follow. So when we get to heaven and worship the Father, we're going to worship the Son, for they are one in one. Romans 1.17. It's all about the Father today. You know, I, you know, I could. I could say how great I am. I'm not going to. And there are people out there... They'll worship and they'll praise the pastor more than God. I want to thank the pastor. I want to thank this church. I want to thank God. And they don't thank God. They don't thank Jesus. It's about the Father. If there was no Father, now atheists and evolutionists, if there was no Father, we would not be here today. What would be? I have no idea because we just read in John chapter 1. Everything that is has been created by Jesus and God. It's hard to think what we would be without God because without God we would not be. And the fact is eternal life is as, as sinner as I am and I am a sinner. I'm only going to heaven by the merit of the Father and the Son Jesus Christ and nothing else. Thank you Father. Romans chapter 1 verse 7. To all that be in Rome beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you, and peace from God our Father. Now he's writing to Christians. And the Lord Jesus Christ. Now that doesn't really mean the Father here and the Lord over here. That means one and one. It's a syntax and. It's like, uh, it's, it's hard to get, but it's together. But here Paul writing to the Romans, the saved Romans, Beloved of God, there's only one way to be beloved of God, and it's not those who rejected Jesus Christ. There is no love to those that reject Jesus Christ. God our Father. Man, we read in Matthew, it says, if, you beautiful, if for the church, the Christian, God is God our Father. So, Children sometimes when they get in, in disputes and troubles, I'm going to get my father. I'm going to call my father. Well, wait till your father gets home. A mother would say to the child. When you run into troubles and problems like that, why don't we go to our father and say, Father, got a problem. Father, I'm losing my patience. I'm, I, I'm in this troubles. I'm in this problems. Why wait till he has to get to, has to chasten us? And God our Father will chasten us, but He also loves us, and that's why He chases us. But here, go to our Father. And it's not our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And that's just words. You don't mean it. You don't mean it. Romans 15, verse 6. Romans 15, verse 6. I can't do half of the honor to, to acknowledge our Father. I can't. It's that you may with one mind and one mouth in 36 different Bibles. There's one God, one baptism, one body, and then you have 86 different Bibles. That doesn't make sense. Now, well, what if I read this verse right here? 
that you may be one mind and one mouth, and you have an RSV, you have an NIV, you have an RSV, and then somebody came over here and they had a QUP, and, and that would defy what we just read. And matter of fact, what we just read, wouldn't you guys would be like, okay, can't follow the bouncing ball, the words don't matter. That you may be one mind and one mouth glorifying God. All right, that's great, glorifying. I honor God. The Bible says, so do the devils, and they tremble. All right? So there is the honor of God. Let's get more specific. Even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. There are people out there who worship God, but it's not, they, he doesn't have a son named Jesus. He's got other sons by other goddesses or female uh, humans on them. And that's, that's Roman mythology. That's Greek mythology. That's Babylon mythology and all that. Listen, there's a, there's a child out there, a god called Tammuz. You know who Tammuz is? We're going to celebrate his birthday in, uh, I think six days. Today's the 19th. I think six plus 19 is 25. Oh, same day as Christmas. It is the same day. Tammuz is not right. the son of God. He's the son of a God. Yeah, a God. Small g. Uh -huh. My God has a son named the Lord Jesus Christ, the beloved son, who was not born of a man, but born by the Spirit, John chapter 3. So, again, as we're witnessing, we're dealing with people for who we are today, we got to acknowledge God who has a son. Again, Jehovah Witnesses believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Okay, great, glory to God. But is he God? What we just read. No. Okay, you're wrong. The Mormons believe Jesus is God. To a point. They believe Jesus is the Son of God. Great. Where's their problem? They also believe the devil. The devil, the, the devil and Jesus are brothers. Well, that defies scripture. Uh, absolutely. In one Bible, they call Satan the morning star. So, there's that. 15.6. 1 Corinthians 1, three. Now we're in the realm of Paul. <laughs> right into the church. I'm not one of them Paul only because we looked at other scriptures. But right into the church, 1 Corinthians 1, three. Grace be unto you and peace. I thought peace came from the United Nations. From God our Father. There we go. And from the Lord Jesus Christ. Not just Jesus. The Lord Jesus Christ. Because Paul will tell, tell the same church of Corinth. There's another Jesus out there. He better be Lord. Jesus Christ. The anointed of God. The beloved Son of God. You know what Lord means? Whatever you do, you, uh, you, whatever you tell me to do, I do that. I don't do that. I'm sorry to say. There are things God's told me to do, and I don't do them. Whatever stupid reason I make up, I don't do. But this God the Father and our worship is the Lord Jesus Christ. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. There is no other name given amongst men whereby you must be saved. Amen. You're not going to fall into this, Amen. our Father Catholic heaven. Where Mary's going to say, Jesus, step down. I'll take care of this. <laughs> no. You're not going to have a Jesus that has no power as God. You're not going to have a Jesus that smoked dope and other kinds of things like that. Uh, the hip, the hip Hippies. Hippies. He's going to be the Lord. And there are going to be a lot of people, Christians, that are going to be at the judgment seat of Christ and their works are going to burn because Jesus was not the Lord in their life. Something else was. But I can say one thing about the Lord Jesus. There are things in my life He is the Lord. But to sing, I surrender all, would be a sin. Because I have not surrendered at all. And I, I'm ashamed to say that, but that is my, that's who I am. Amazing to sing a hymn and then sinning before God. And after the hymn, let's now all come to the altar. How about that? Uh, 1 Corinthians 8, 6.
Paul's writing to the Corinthians to a carnal church. You know, you know one of the things the carnal church was doing? I got my favorite pastor. Oh, that pastor's better than your pastor. Well, my pastor, right? My pastor has his... My pastor has his own website. He has all these different things. He's got a school, and this, you don't have a school. Look how big our building is. Look how many buses we have. Look at all the people. That's what this church is doing. This church has a man that's sleeping with his stepmother. And they're like, okay, that sounds good. 1 Corinthians 8. Six, how be it? There is not in every man that knowledge. For some with conscience of the idol unto this hour eat it as a thing offered unto an idol, and their conscience being weak is defiled. But in verse 8, But meat commendeth us not to God, for neither if we eat are we the better, neither if we eat not, we the worse. God is not a diet, exercise, weight loss program. There are religions out there that say, well, you can't eat that, you can eat this, you can't eat that. Well, you can only do what the Levitical law says about eating. You can't have pork, because the Bible says you, you can't. That's not God. We are under grace. Our God says, hey, if you can bow your head and give thanks and not worry about camping out at the store tonight to waste all your money to buy a whole bunch of junk and kick everybody over and push and shove and, and just end up in a hospital and stuff like that because you want an electronic box, which we just had last month, Black Friday. When we have a meal, whether our tummies can handle it or not, certain foods my stomach can't have, certain foods Tracy's stomach can't have, I'm not under a law that says don't eat it because when I can bow my head, Paul says, and I can say, Lord God, I thank you for this meal. And I say this often at the farmer's market. You don't thank God for those fruits and vegetables you're selling. And because I've opened up my big mouth to tell you, you're going to be held guilty. And not only do we have God the Father that does the Son, gives us rain, is willing and able to forget all our sins, we can have God able to put a plate in front of our face and eat. Now, we may not like it, or we may love it. Well, I get out of the verse also. Like with the Catholic Church during Lent, don't eat yep. um, eat fish, don't eat meat. Yeah, it's not right. what we yeah. eat that commendeth God. That's and you right. and you got you'll probably see on television. You probably get mail. These starving children in India. You got a bunch of hamburgers walking around. Those hamburgers called cows are your religion. Your God is so merciful. He's going to let you die of starvation while you let a moo moo live. God yeah. may God maybe gave them those moo moos. So they wouldn't starve. Yeah, but they don't believe in eating meat. Well, they eat chicken and fish. No. Uh, I, they India? Don't. Yes, they do. But yeah, we have a God that is merciful and giving us... Imagine evolution making us we have a stomach, okay? What if evolution forgot to give us food for our stomachs? How long would that ape last before he died of starvation? Isn't that interesting? We have a digestive system for food, and just by accident, all the food came to be. No, that's God. That's the yeah, Father. And God made all that fruit mature before Adam and Eve came on the, the scene. So in what, six days, he matured all those fruits and vegetables. Galatians chapter 1, verse 3. Galatians 1, 3. Now, next week, Lord willing, we're going to get into us as the children of God, the sons of God. Today, the Father. And, like with the cat, with the, how our Father who are in heaven, I almost, almost forget that. In most cases, for, for those, God is not your Father. 
unless you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm not saying a Catholic can't be saved. But the Pope is their father. The Pope carries the name of God, Holy Father. So Galatians 1, 3. Grace be to you, and peace from God the Father, and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Now look at the peace and grace that God gives us with mercy, with the sunrise, with the rain, with the crops, food, animals. Unlimited salvation of forgiving our sins. That's a wonderful great father of ours. First John 1 John 1.9. 1 John 1 9. We don't give God much, as much credit as we should. That's true, we don't. 1 John 1 9. If we confess our sins, notice that if, that's conditional. Some people don't. There are sins I have not confessed, maybe. Or I confess with a half-heartedness. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. That's God. To cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I said, that's God. I already quoted that. I mean, look at, look at the power He has. He's able to erase. You know, if... I don't know. If he, maybe there's a bad illustration today. But if you were to write on a chalkboard, all right, you write something on a chalkboard, and you go to erase it with the eraser, you realize what you wrote is on that eraser now? All right, now one of the jobs I had to do in school, we all do, we got to take the erasers outside and clap them. Remember that? Well, what you wrote on the chalkboard is on the eraser. Well, now as you clap it, it's on the plants, the trees, wherever. What you wrote is somewhere, in, today still, somewhere in the dirt, somewhere. All those years of chalkboard are somewhere today. Where? I don't know. Washed away in the dirt. But do you realize your sins, when you put them in the blood, are nowhere? Nowhere. You put a log in a fire. Well, here's this big old log. It turns into ash. You take that ash, you throw it out. Well, there's the remnants of that log. It's still a log, but now it's at. Our sins are gone forever. Not even a residue to be found. That defies nature. That defies the specific laws of God by nature. Nothing is completely... Uh, in them, I can't even say the word. Eliminated. Eliminated. There's always some kind of fragment. They say smoke is still. You know, you don't see it no more. It's in the atmosphere. But our sins under the blood are completely never, ever. They are impossibly of the laws of nature erased forever. Um, verse thir uh, chapter 2, verse 13. 1 John. I write unto you fathers, because you have known fathers, that's a small f. Because you have known of him. That's from the beginning. That's God. I write unto you young men, because you have overcome the wicked one. That's the devil. I write unto you little children, because ye have known the Father. Capital F. How are Christian fathers today doing teaching their children the father the Father? I don't think that's very well going on today. I don't think that's... Chapter 2, verse 22. Who is a liar? We read Satan. But he that denies that Jesus is the Christ. He's an antichrist that denieth the Father, capital F, and the Son. If you deny God the Father and the Son, God relates to you as a liar. And when you read the Revelation, there, are no, there is no place for liars in heaven. So any religion, anything but God the Father and God the Son, 
You're classified written down as a liar. How's that? Um, chapter 3, verse 1. Chapter 3, verse 1. Here we go. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Now look at look, that's us and the Father in one verse. Why? Because of love. You know, there are children around today, they are here not because of love. I know. Because of the lust of the flesh, may I say? And yet the Bible says he adopted us by Jesus Christ, so he was willing. It's not like we're going to get the glory. Oh, he's here because he had to be here. Then you got, there is no, I can't think of anything now. Oh, boy, what did they say? You're saved or you're not saved. In the name. No, that religion where it says God has willed you to be saved or willed you to be lost. Calvinism. That verse right there defies Calvinism. It is the love of God. Then run to John 3.16, for God so loved the world. It is the love of God that we are his children by Jesus Christ. And John speaks so much about the Father. I'm just running through the verses here. Verse, uh, chapter 4. Now, it doesn't say Father, but look at verse 7. This is what the world quotes. Chapter 4, verse 7. First John, beloved. That's us. We're beloved of God. Let us love one another. The world takes that to profanity. For love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God. Being born again. There it is. Not a birth of a mother. Birth being born again. And knoweth God. There are people out there loving others. They have no idea who God is. He that loveth not knoweth not God. For God is love. And this was manifested the love of God toward us because that God sent His only begotten Son into the world that we might live through Him. Herein, and this verse has been perverted, I found out, a hard way. Herein is love, not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Alright? By the Father God and His love for me, by the Son, Lord Jesus Christ. Before April 21st, 1987, I had no idea what love was. I said, I love you, Mom. I love you, Dad. I said, love to various other people. But I didn't know God. After April 21st, 1987, when I received Christ as my Savior, and I began to say, I love you, I've been that... I know what love is now. Amen. Because God is love. Amen. And if you don't know God, if you don't know the Father, you don't have love at all. And you ask Tracy, all the years she, she's been witnessing with me on the streets everywhere, who are the most despicable, anger people in the world? Religion. People that are in religion. Who are those that really love you and help you and do all they can and will talk to you and have everything? Those that love God. That's right. And they know how the nerve to come up to me. You need to preach more love. You need to shut up. Don't yell while they're yelling in your face. Yep. That's what happened last week. Yeah, the guy came yeah. cussing every four letter work. Oh but see, see, the thing is. Farmer? No, farmer's market. Farmer's market. That's, that's a wonderful place. you got to come down. Great. Sometimes I blow my top like I did that time. I came out and told the guy to shut up. But, you see, you realize, okay, remember I told you I can't fathom all for you about God and Jesus and the Father. I can't. We can't even fathom what love is. 
we don't even know the situation that Jesus left the throne to come down to us. Because he loved us. That's right. If you were to hold a gun to my head right now and say, declare to me what heaven is exactly like, you're going to have to pull the trigger. Then I'll know. But I can't give you word back. So when we talk about the love of God, people come up to me quite frequently, you need more love, you need to preach more love. I'm doing the best I can by telling you, you need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's right. Now, I know about the baby born in the manger and not December the all that I know about that. I don't know where he came from. I don't imagine what the heart. In God, the Bible says God has a heart. That God felt that that son would leave his presence for thirty-three and a half years. At one point in time, when Jesus on the cross, God turned off everything, turned off the lights. He said, "I can't even look upon him." And yet receive him to be seated at the right hand of the Father today after he rose again from the third, third day. Now Peter, I said Peter got rebuked. He loved the Lord Jesus. He said, no, I don't want you to die. Depart from me, Satan. You favor that which is, you know, your own emotions. And Jesus said the scriptures. If we cannot fathom God the Father and his love, But one day we're going to. That's right. And when you got the world who doesn't thank God for that sun coming up. Oh, it's another hot sunny day, or it's a cold day, or it ruined my plans for this weekend, or or Christians take lightly that He has forgiven us for our sins totally, without residue. You take salt water from the ocean now and put it in a glass. Within three years, that glass will have no more water in it, but it will have the filthiness and the salt of that water. But God says, erase, washed, wash your car. Well, the gunk that was on your car is in the sponge and in the water. But my sins, and all that through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, through the merit of Jesus Christ, He is going to take me where it's absolutely perfect, for He's perfect. And I had the notion to try to raise myself up and my ministry and who I am. We're just dirt. God would be righteous, though he won't be righteous. You ever say one day, you know what? I'm just sick of you guys. Go to hell. But guess what? He can never say that to those that are under the blood. That's right. I mean, pe people can say, all right, I'm done with you. Get out of here. Don't ever come back. God says, listen, if you believe in my son, I am your father. I adopted you. The laws, there are laws in this state. I mean, in this state. Adopted child can never lose his inheritance. As a matter of fact, some states say you have to include him in your inheritance. Over a natural child. So our father, and the one last thing, never going to leave us or forsake us, no matter how wicked we get. We're adopted into his family. That's though if someone get church discipline, which church discipline is fine. God says they're my son. I hope they do better. I hope they get right. I hope they get it right. Amen. Glory of God. And Lord God, I've done so much injustice to you today. But I plead the blood of Jesus Christ, because Lord, I, I don't know how to explain. The unexplainable. And yet, Lord, what thousands, millions, or billions of people right now before your throne, washed by the blood of Jesus. And the book of Revelation says they're glorifying the Son right now and to be. Thank you, Lord. For Jesus' sake, we pray. Amen. 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 Yep.